Hello and welcome to Higher or Lower, the show brought to you by Oddschecker, Sporting Index and SpreadX, where the panel take a look at the weekend's football, taking the midpoint from the spreads market and telling you whether we think it will be higher or lower. I'm pleased to be joined, as ever, by Jack Wright on my left. And this week, we are joined by Sam Ty. What a privilege. Wow, yes. Mm. How stepping, you doing, mate? All stepping right? in for George. Stepping in for George. So, now that I'm the host and he's not here, I'll have to do my best George Ellick impression. Oh. And I think, in my position, he would say, good week last week, let's move on, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. I think so. 100%. Yeah, um, nothing much happened. So, yeah, with him not being here, I think that's exactly what we'll do. Let's crack on. Great week all yeah. round. I'm still um, top. Let's move. Jack is still top. George is, is level after, after a pretty strong week. So if you are watching, mate, well done. You can't from that cupboard that you've locked him in over there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Sam, you're going to take on George's picks this week, which I'm sure he'll be delighted to hear. Do you want me to do well or poorly? I would love it if you do poorly. Okay. Mm. Um, that's my excuse that, if I do then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's um, covered. me assuming that I do well, because I need to yeah. get a few more mm. points out. He'll be fine. Anyway, we'll start in the championship, which is usually George's favourite, so... No pressure here. Mm -hmm. Where's the um, EFL expert when you need one? I know. Um, and it's Sheffield Wednesday versus Leeds. We're looking at the supremacy market here. With Leeds favourites by 1.05 goals is the midpoint. So if you think Leeds will win by more than one goal, we need more than one here for this to cop. Um, you're higher if you think it'll be a draw or a Sheffield Wednesday win, you will be lower. So after three then, guys. Three, two, one. Ooh, oh. Okay. Oh, I'm on my own. Go on, Jack. Take it away. Wow. Okay. Um, I think the, the point zero five is quite crucial for yeah. me in this one. Um, and in George's absence, it feels like he's kind of more <laughs> permanent than, than he is, but um, it's only temporary. Um, you know, one of his phrases that he loves is the Danny roll of evolution at uh, mm. Sheffield Wednesday. So um, much improved under him. Won the last four. Uh, unbeaten in the last five at home. Um, the, the key stat for me, I think, really, is when you look at even before him, um, they weren't terrible at home. And going across the last 12 home league games, they've not lost by two or more goals in any of those. So I think for me, that is where can Leeds go there and put on a real masterclass? Yes, they can, because we know they've got the, the, the firepower in spades, um, but I just feel that Sheffield Wednesday at this moment in time are good enough to be able to make this a tough one for Leeds. Um, they got a 1-1 draw with Leicester in that run of games that I talked about Sheffield Wednesday, so they've got it in the locker to be able to make, make this a tough Friday night for Leeds, who've not blown sides away in recent weeks. I think uh, from general reports uh, of the game, most people thought that performance last week against Huddersfield was quite stodgy, and they were a little bit fortunate, obviously, against 10 men for the second half mm. entirety um, and, and managed just to come away with a draw. So I feel with that and also that kind of narrow win at home where they've been so strong against Stoke in midweek, I feel that Sheffield Wednesday can produce something here to get even a point possibly, but certainly not get battered by Leeds. Yeah, you're right. It's that 0-5, isn't it? It's because crucial for me, yeah. yeah. Well, I but mean, not for you. No, no, it's not. But it, it did make it a lot harder because like, I, Le Leeds are going to win this game, I think. But will they win it by more than one? Obviously, I think yes. Yeah. But that is the big question. Yeah, I mean the the point the point zero five is does make it a bit tougher. Otherwise, it, we'd all be in agreement and be really really yeah, easy, yeah. right? Yes. Um, I guess what you have to marry up is Sheffield Wednesday's improvement in form, predicated in parts on on defensive solidity. You've got a couple of one nils, a couple of two nil wins, mm. almost always less than 50% possession in this run of the last six games where they have been just defensively solid and yeah. been able to pick teams off where necessary. Can that approach stifle Leeds? Last couple of games from Leeds' perspective, you would argue, yes, to the tune of at least a goal. Mm. I think you probably would back them, but Le the Leeds attack just scares me. And so when I did <laughs> marry it up and I, and I tried to weigh it up in my head, I think the high power attack for Leeds essentially just won, won the tug of war in my head. And so I went for higher. Yeah. Nice. Well, two for higher and one for lower as we move into the Premier League and we're starting with Man United versus Everton. Looking at the total goals market here with the midpoint at 3.1. So if you think there'll be four or more goals, it'll be a higher. If you think three or fewer, will be lower. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, oh there it's we a go. clean sweep. On the same pace it's this clean time round. Go on, Sam, kick us off. OK, my starting point here is that I do not think Everton are going to score. <laughs> so that just leaves me with one team to make up the margin, I guess. Um, Everton away from home, I think, are distinctly untrustworthy. And 
I've just recently done some work on uh, on who scored XG and just happened to look at the the top five underperformers, <laughs> and you can't look at Dominic Calvert Lewin and Beto amongst the top five, top mm. six biggest culprits for XG underperformance, and then marry that up with Everton's away form, which has generally been quite poor, mm. and think that they're going to pull up any trees here. So yeah. then you're asking yourself the question, I know this is a little simplistic, but <laughs> then you're asking yourself, right, can Man United cover this? Mm. Four goals is a lot of goals. Yes. Like, I know it's Man United, I know they're at home, but it's a lot of goals. So if you don't have a lot of faith in one of the teams to help cover this margin, I think it's safer from my perspective to go lower. Yeah, I agree. And with United, like Rashford's got a knock, Hoyland's going to miss out. Mm. I'm starting to think, OK, if United are going to get four, who, who is going to get them? Yeah. Um, and... Scott with Tomane, obviously. He's only good for two, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. generally, generally only good yeah. for two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's Scott with Tomane. Mm. But yeah, the, the XG thing with Everton, I mean, I, I don't actually have much here to back up my point. Maybe they're due a massive overcorrection, yeah. but it doesn't seem mm. like... <laughs> 15 goals this game. Yeah. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Mm. Anything to add? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, Rashford obviously scored last week, but so that was, a, I think... Talking of XG, 0.03 yeah. XG. So yeah. they only managed three shots in that game. I know it was Manchester City away. Um, I think a combined total of 0.25 as far as their XG in that game is concerned. So they've been struggling up front this season and they had a little purple patch that coincided with Hoyland uh, you know, hitting the straps and, and mm. scoring goals. And obviously he's out now. Um, since he's been, been uh, injured, they lost to Fulham and that was a late Harry Maguire goal for them to score that. Only three goals in that game. They went to Nottingham Forest in the Cup, a late set piece from Casemiro to win that one 1-0. One um, and then, uh, yes, it was 3-1 against Manchester City, but I think Man City and goals tend to be a one that you just draw a line for and look at, el look at elsewhere. But, yeah, I focused pretty much on what the forward power are like for both sides. You've covered Everton superbly. What more can you say on that? Uh, only the bottom two have scored fewer goals than them this season. Sean Dyche has come out and said that that's their problem, well done, it's, uh, <laughs> nailed that one absolutely perfectly, but on the flip side of that, only the top three have got a better defensive record than Everton, so yeah, what, what's their game plan going to be at Old Trafford? You'd assume they're going to kind of keep it tight, um, the last four Everton games have been 0-0 at half time, so you can see them looking to try and take a similar pattern to that, uh, the last three away games have been 0-0 at half time, one of those was Manchester City, so they've gone and done a relatively decent job there, I think ended up 2-0, so that, I would assume, would be the game plan there. Let's try and nick one, keep it tight, keep in the game as long as possible, frustrate the Old Trafford crowd, and say, M Man United, six, only six teams have scored fewer goals than them. So they have not been performing particularly well either in that respect. So, yeah, for me, a tight game, four goals is a high line. I'm certainly happy to take all the scores that, that fit underneath that. Yeah, for sure. All in agreement there, then. Um, it seems before we go on to the next one, it's a perfect time to tell you about the new account offer with SpreadX. Uh, which is place a £10 fixed odd, odds bet and get 40 free bets across a range of markets, of which one is the total goals market, which we've just discussed there. So if you agree with us, get involved. Or in fact, even if you disagree with us, get involved <laughs> in there and um, make some money. Uh, moving on to Arsenal versus Brentford then, um, after Arsenal blew away Sheffield United and Jack and I on the wrong <sighs> end of this market mm. in particular. Um, the midpoint is 178.5 minutes here. Hi. Um, very high, very high, but we'll, we'll come on to that. Mm. Um, don't give away, don't give away your paddle just yet. I'm not. But let's go for okay. it. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, I did give uh, it away. Look, yeah. at, look at the surprise. <laughs> look at the surprise. Go on, yeah. Jack. Uh, highlight, even higher than, as we said, that much maligned Sheffield United uh, game where it looked like we were, we were going to be um, cashing our higher uh, option um, and uh, they just scored too early several times too early <laughs> there we go we Many move on times. so uh, an insane run of form for Arsenal you, you can't take away from it and so they're the first side in English top flight history that have gone and won three away games by five or more goals in, in again in George's absence let's use one of his catchphrases that <laughs> is unsustainable they're, they're not going to continue to win five and six nil every single week they've yeah. been doing it long enough as it is now um, there's going to come a time when they're, they're going to um, settle I suppose, or, or get stifled by a side and, and it's going to be a, a lesser margin victory. And I take that to be this one. And the key element for me in this is that the Porto game next week is going to be clearly on their agenda at some point at the time here. And I feel that they, if they can get an early lead in this one, they will then look to look, try and rest 
uh, rotate some of those players out, the key elements of their side ahead of that Porto clash. So a, a similar pattern, maybe not quite so prolific, but a similar pattern to the Sheffield United game wouldn't surprise me where they, they go in, get two or three up and then declare. Sounds very easy to do that, but uh, um, <laughs> yeah, obviously the history on side, recent history this season, both games between these two sides because they did meet in the League Cup ended 1-0 to Arsenal. So that's got a ring to it. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Sam? Uh, like Arsenal hit Sheffield United for six, but only clocked up 155 goal mm. minutes. Mm. So, <laughs> sorry guys, sorry guys. I know, but they did, the, po the point is they did the damage early. Yeah, And if, you, early. if you think Arsenal were going to start fast and do the damage early here, which I do and, and mm. you clearly agree, then, well, this line is, is probably unachievable. Even before you factor in the unsustainability of yeah. scoring five or six goals per game, mm. and even before you factor in the fact that they will have one eye on that Porto mm. game. Yeah which is absolutely huge. Now, Brentford are not as poor as Sheffield United, but they are quite, they are poor, <laughs> they have been poor defensively. Yeah. I mean, you watched them against West Ham the other week oh. and they were absolutely dreadful. So mm. there is a part of me that goes, could be another battering. Yeah. But when you put that Sheffield United goal minutes into perspective, even if they get absolutely hammered, this is still probably unachievable, yeah. in my opinion. And that West Ham game you talked about, they were two down in seven minutes, wasn't yeah. it? So that's the exact yeah. profile we're talking about here. If Arsenal can get that kind of start, they're going to go, oh, very nice. And they're going to look to play it around at the back. And I think Brentford are uh, looking at damage limitation then. And one key element of that, I guess, is Ivan Tony. He's the maybe the fly in the ointment as far as goals are concerned because he could potentially add them for um, Brentford. But we saw him a couple of weeks ago in that yeah. particular West Ham game where yeah, he weren't very pleased. No with good. No <laughs> good at all. Yeah, no, that's a horrendous performance from him. Um, yeah, I don't really have much to add. Just a slight devil's advocate statement like with, with Wire out. I don't know if that increases Brentford's chances of scoring so they can maybe add some minutes here. I, I, I don't fancy that at all, really. I'm just but they have to take the shots to get to that point. Yeah, yeah they do, yeah. yeah. And that's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're being very dismissive of Brentford, which, which feels harsh because mm. they're a very competent team. Mm. But recently, there's, been, there's not been a lot to like. No. And until you know, Brian and Burma comes back, probably isn't going to be that X factor in attack that we're looking for here to break open a game in space mm. that Brentford will clearly need to lean on here yeah. in order to get something from an Arsenal team that do not allow shots. No, I was going to say that. They just don't allow teams to take shots. Yeah. Their XG against is phenomenal. Yeah. Their goals conceded record is phenomenal. Newcastle have two shots against them, I think, in that recent game. And they, they scored with one, so maybe you can point the finger at David Raya rather mm. than saying that he's the, um, you know, he's one shot on target and as a goal. I think uh, Liverpool were a similar scenario where there was one shot on target from them. Um, in, certainly in the XG. I mean, their XG was on yeah. 0.4 yeah, the whole game. Low, yeah. And it was the own goal. <laughs> like the yeah. weirdest own goal yeah. ever. Yeah. Weird things have to happen for yeah. Arsenal to actually concede at this point. Yeah. Agreed. Cool. OK, over to Aston Villa versus Tottenham. We've got two markets here, but we'll kick off with the supremacy, um, which is the margin of victory for the favourites, who are Aston Villa and the home side are favourites by 0 0.1 as the midpoint. So very close. But obviously a higher is Villa win, lower is Tottenham win or draw. OK? Yes. OK. <laughs> Three, two, one... Oh. oh, we're all together oh, again. Wow. Sam, go on, I'll let you no go first. Differential. Right. No AFL expert this please, week, but we I have a Villa have, expert. I'll take 10 minutes of your time to give you a, <laughs> a brief history of Aston Villa in European competition. Um, no, the European thing is really important. So we're mm. recording on the Thursday morning. We don't know what has happened in Amsterdam. And Villa have got this, this game against Ajax, which is really clouding things here. Mm. But obviously that is a very short turnaround from Thursday through to early Sunday, like 1.30 p.m. kickoff and a very, very difficult game against a very good Spurs side. So mm -hmm. just take into account fatigue and energy levels. This is already, I think, counting against Villa a little bit. And then you get the idea of having a bit of a double chance on you know, Tottenham yep. there, the draw or the win. That becomes very attractive. And for those like wondering about, you know, oh, okay, well, how seriously will Villa take Thursday when you know, top four is, top five is on the line, this is massive for Villa. Uh, and, and you know, it's been 13 years since Villa have been in Europe. This campaign has been seminal for those reasons, where it's been a, a real return to the good times. And actually, the last time Villa were any good at all, as in top six calibre, they played Ajax in mm. the UEFA Cup group stages. And they won. There's a very famous goals from Martin Lawson and Gareth Barry, and it was a, a truly special night at Villa Park. Now, this one is in Amsterdam. The return leg at Villa Park is next week. I'm going. I can't mm. wait. <laughs> but this fixture has a certain special something to it for Villa fans. And I hope... I, I expect that to rub off on the players, and I think they'll understand how important that is. I think an awful lot of energy is going to go into tonight. Mm. An awful lot. 
and you just don't know what's going to be left over for Spurs. And then you factor in the fact that the last time these two teams played, I appreciate Villa won. I thought they were very fortunate to do so. They met Tottenham at that point where they had no centre-backs and no midfielders, mm. and then Benton Kerr got injured half an hour in, and Tottenham still outplayed them. And this time around, Van der Ven's fit, Romero's fit, mm -hmm. Madison's fit. Mm. It's, this is, is going to be a much more difficult game than I think a lot of people realise for Villa. And that home special something has also dipped off a little bit, right? From the moment they drew against Sheffield United just before Christmas at mm. home. It's not been an automatic win. Mm. So for all of those reasons, <laughs> that wasn't quite eight minutes, but it probably was one. <laughs> I'm going to go with lower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you. I, I've actually got that down about the home form. Like, You look at the season, amazing home form yeah. like across it. But yeah, starting to... It's to not automatic it. anymore. Yeah. yeah. It's still a, a pretty good bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's no longer automatic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. And Tottenham love a draw recently. Yeah. And so I'm, 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 yeah, my, my guess is that this will be a draw, which is why I've gone lower. Yep. Um, Would Villa, Villa be happy with a draw? Obviously, there's a yes. five-point gap at the yeah, moment, yeah, isn't yeah, there? for sure. Although it's weird because this is being billed as this massive game for the top four. When there's about a 90% likelihood at this point that top five will yeah. be Champions League. So mm. there's actually very little jeopardy here from Villa because the key point is that they're 11 points clear of Man United in sixth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks for looks very likely that fifth is Champions League anyway. Mm. So what this should be huge for fourth, but it just the gloss of it has just been taken off ever so slightly by the fact that these two are probably going to finish in the Champions League anyway. Yeah. Or if that, it's a bigger game for Spurs, who obviously don't have as much of a buffer yeah, towards yeah. Man United. Yeah. Anything else? Mm. Not really, no. Same, same principles, really. I think to get the draw on side is big. The European fixture tonight uh, is... A, a swaying factor, really, for me. I think mm -hmm. it's a, a tight one to call and uh, getting two results on side is, is nice, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Well, both of the guys either side of me love this market, so we're bound <laughs> to have some great commentary here. It's the bookings market um, with the midpoint of 52. Um, it's 10 points for a yellow, 25 points for a red. So, yeah, 52, the midpoint. Are we higher or lower? Three, two, one. Oh, Sam's gone the other way, finally. So I know you want to start with me because I'm the odd one out. Yes. But can we just start with the logic and go to Jack first yeah, of talk course about we the can. referees? Because I did not even look at who's referee. <laughs> okay, nice. I've got other reasons. You've got other reasons. Yes, certainly. Okay, no problem. Well, let's just go with some boring stats and figures. Let's go from averages and then we'll go with some raw emotion with, with yourself, <laughs> which is what we love. So um, 40 in the reverse, all Villa. Boo, naughty boys mm. of Villa. Um, mm. Third in the disciplinary table, as far as third highest for bookings concerned. 73 yellow cards, one red card this season so far. Spurs are down in 12th with 58, but four reds. Mm. So, um, yeah, pretty pretty strong on that side the of things. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Romero, yeah. yeah. So, oh, mm, maybe or not. So there's some options there. Looking at the averages across the season so far, Villa at home, average is 56.54. Six games have gone lower, seven games have gone higher. So it's quite a tough one to call. Spurs, 54.17 away from home average as well. So both of those averages actually come in higher. Mm, what am I doing? I'm going, yeah. what am I going lower. Seven lower, five higher for them across that. Referee is Chris Kavanagh. So mm. one of those fairly, sorry, Chris, one of those fairly nondescript referees that kind of just sort of bumbles along, flies under the radar. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel <laughs> I've got it in for you, I haven't really. Um, 14 appearances in the Premier League this season. His average is 47.5. Now, I actually, generally, when I look at the market, my first instinct is who's referee, unless it's a real absolute barnstormer yeah. that looks like it's ripe for cards. Um, I tend to look at the referee and work out whether he's the sort of guy that lets things flow. We've done that recently and mm -hmm. uh, been successful. Um, so 47.5 is his average. That's the 11th highest in the Premier League. So uh, mid-table there. Um, 10 of his 14 Premier League games have gone lower. And we're just four nice. going higher. So that was the kind of the side, in fact, I think. In one that I reckon will go close. Mm. But we need in six yellow cards or an equivalent here with a red thrown in. So six yellows is quite a high line. Um, not really refereed either of these two sides. Overly recently, it was a year ago he refereed mm. Villa, and that was a game against West Ham where there's just one yellow card in that. Um, it was December for uh, Newcastle for Spurs uh, at home. Uh, there was four yellow cards in that. But enough of the boring stats <laughs> and figures. Let's find out why this one is going to be carnage. Yeah, I think this one could get a bit nasty, basically. And it's because of what happened in, in the first fixture this season between the two teams. Oh, yes. I mean, Spurs fans will remember it very vividly because some of them have been on social media <laughs> campaigning for Matty Cash's imprisonment ever since. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he did tackle Rodrigo Bentancur 
pretty poorly. Mm. It wasn't a nice tackle. Bentancur had to go off. Uh, maybe 10 minutes later, he just returned from an ACL tear and he was stepping into a midfield that had already been riddled with injuries and suspensions. So tensions were high. Um, mm. It threatened to boil over a little bit. You mentioned the fact that there were, there were four yellow cards. Mm. Uh, look, honestly, I've been yeah, watching Villa recently. When, when the atmosphere gets hot, there's a few players on this pitch that will, will go the wrong side of the line. Douglas Louise is one, surprisingly. Yeah. John McGinn is another one. Uh, Matty Cash is potentially going to be in for a bit of a battle here. Mm. Christian Romero is on the pitch <laughs> and Cash's bodyguard, Diego Carlos, has returned to training <laughs> and may be fielded in order to protect him. So I just think it's got the ingredients to maybe spark a little bit. Not only is there, is there a quite a lot on the line, particularly for Spurs, mm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a clash between two, two big teams, primetime Sunday game with a lot on the line, but there's just a little bit of history here from that first game that I am, it just sticks in the back of my mind. And I just mm. wonder, could this one get a little bit out of hand? Yes. Yeah, actually, that's quite convincing. <laughs> <And also laughs> it was quite, it one was one quite, thing yeah. that I remembered is last week we had success in looking at the game being really tight and that mm -hmm. sort of yeah. implying that there'll be more cards as a result. Mm. I think this game is going to be really tight. Yeah. I've put lower up now, so I can't change my mind. <laughs> um, but yeah. it, is a, it is a highlight, it is, and yeah. the yeah. stats sort of back you up. But I just, I just wonder what effect that will, that first game will have mm. On, mm. on this one. There are certainly players on there that don't need a lot to, to ignite, and a, a, an early crunch or yeah. two in this one could see this one spiral out of control. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping, I'm hoping my mate Cav keeps keeps well, a lid on it. Well, he might keep a lid on it. He might do. <laughs> he might do. We'll see. We oh, shall Cav. see. <laughs> right then, over to. Arguably the game of the weekend. I mean, it has to be the game of the weekend. It's Liverpool versus Manchester City at Anfield. We're looking at the supremacy market first, which has Man City as favourites. 0 0.25 is the midpoint. So, again, if you think Man City will win, it's higher. If you think it'll be a draw or a Liverpool win, it's lower. Three, two, one. Oh, on your own again. Yeah. This time you will start. Why am I on my own here? <laughs> you don't think Man City are going to win this game? So I just turned it all around on you. Yeah. <laughs> One second. Um, yes, it feels dangerous to bet against Liverpool, or at least a double chance at Anfield. Mm. But you guys have been watching the same games as me, right? Mm. You've watched the cup final. You watch the game against Forest. You watch the game against Southampton. Yeah. This Liverpool team are just leaking, find a way. Oh, right. leaking oh, chances. Yeah. And against lesser opponents, they're getting away with it. You know, mm. Quaven Kelleher saving like a total of three XG in the final is one thing. Mm. Forrest cutting them open four or five times and fluffing their lines. Southampton hitting the post and missing a one-on-one. -on -one. This is Manchester City, right? Mm. They've just absolutely breezed through against Copenhagen with seven changes to the starting 11. They are ready and they are revved <laughs> and they are very, very good. <laughs> so I don't think that Liverpool's defensive performances give, me, give them any hope here. I think, I think They've found a way, you're right. Mm. I can't believe they've come through this, this, this period with this many wins. Yeah. But it's going to fall down at some point based on what I'm seeing. And Man City is not the game you want here. Yeah. No? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> go on, Dan. Uh, you tell him. Yeah, go on, no, go on. No. Go, go, go so you've, got, you've got Liverpool's <laughs> Anfield record. Very, very strong, yep. like just historically, but also at the moment versus Rodri's unbeaten run. Yep. Or 59 or whatever it is. Yep. I've got 59 here, but I might be wrong. I, I just think that, that this game has such big implications, obviously, that it will be quite cagey. And I think Liverpool have a few players coming back, Salah mainly, mm -hmm. so they can try and keep the ball at the other end. I, I don't know. I, again, this is another market where I've looked at it and I think, oh, that's, that's probably going to be a draw. So to have a draw and mm. Liverpool, if they can nick a win, I don't know. I, I think that makes sense. I, I, I agree with pretty much everything you said, but... <laughs> I'm getting two, two for one with the draw yep. and Liverpool win. Liverpool at home, uh, I don't know. Yeah, lower. It's, sure. it's hard to back against Liverpool at Anfield. Mm. It's attractive to take the double chance almost when, when it is tight. I've d I literally did the same thing with Tottenham Villa. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, took, I took the lower for, for, for Tottenham, so I get it. I just, I just think Liverpool, I think they're in... I, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying not because uh, I might think, silly. think of the comments coming, just, Sam. <laughs> they should have lost one of these games. Like mm, the yeah. defensive performances have not been good. It's not okay to be relying on Kelleher this much, mm. and then you come up against Foden and Erling Haaland mm. and Kevin De Bruyne, and it just it just feels like it's going to turn in this game. 
Yeah, it's tough. The odds on double chance here for Liverpool in the draw are obviously small. So um, that, that's the angle. Take. It's a tough one to call, let's be honest. Yeah. It's Liverpool versus Manchester City. It's super tough. And I generally think, for me, wherever that line went, I was going to go with a double chance on it. Liverpool's record is incredible at home. One defeat in the last 55 league games at Anfield. Wow which is insane. Um, I think you go back behind that with, with actual support there because they had that weird run, didn't they, where they lost mm. a few on the spin during the COVID times. But with actual supporters in Anfield, it's like an incredible run. Do you know how many times Manchester City have won a league game at Anfield in the last 20 attempts? Yeah, probably none. Not once. <laughs> yeah. Once, that was yeah. all a, a long, long time ago. So, But this is City... It could go either way. Simple as that for me. Really, really tough one to call. Salah back is a massive boost. I think mm. he's travelling to Prague, and, and why not? Who wouldn't? It's a nice night out. <laughs> I'm assuming it's the reason he's not going there. Yeah, the but... architecture's lovely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. superb. It's common streets. Oh, can't yeah, be the history. Oh, incredible. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's a massive win. That he, Obviously, if not starting, then certainly having the ability mm. to bring him off, off the bench. And they are finding a way to get a result. Um whether that can do, like I say, it's tough against City. But, yeah, double chance for me. I'm going to take it because it's a very, very hard one to call. Yeah, it is very tough to call. So, sticking with the same game, one of my favourite markets actually is the last match goal, which, as you can probably guess, is the time of the last match goal scored. Um, the midpoint is 70.5 minutes. So, 69 to sell, 72 to buy with Sporting Index. Um, higher or lower, guys? Three, two, one. Late action. Oh, we're all Hello. in for some late action. I thought I was going to be on my own then again. <laughs> oh, no, you can be in the club for this one. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'll go first. Liverpool have scored the most goals of any team in the Premier League after the 75th minute. Good 24 stat. goals after the 75th minute. Impressive. Like, to be honest, that stat alone for me <laughs> is probably enough for me to go high here. City are the second highest as well, by the way, with 15. Okay. So that nice. matches up quite nicely. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But again, it's just going back to the fact that I think this will be quite tight. And yeah, I just I think all the action will come in the second half, which, yeah, just by default, feels like 70.5 is, I don't know, arguably a little bit low. Well, obviously, I think that, which is why I've gone uh, gone above. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you agree? I agree. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I think with the 70.5 line, you've obviously got best part of 20 minutes Mm. in normal time and then whatever is added on and we could see as much as 10 minutes so realistically you're looking at half an hour here um, somewhere around that mark for a a goal as you said both sides have got a penchant for for late strikes I've done the averages so Liverpool um, well eight games have got at home this season have seen a goal higher than this line and Manchester City nine of their away league games this season have seen higher than the Lions. So that's a combined 17 of 26, uh, 65% of of games, which is quite a a high percentage Mm. that have gone above 70.5. So I just feel that this has got the makings of some late drama. Can I see one of these sides racing into a two or three goal lead and putting the game to bed? No. The only other possible way this won't have a late goal, I think, is if it is nil-nil, something like that which I find hard to believe as well. Mm. And both sides get to that later stage of the game and go, well, actually, do you know what? A draw is not a bad result for either of us here and we'll take it. But not really the way of either of the sides, to be fair. I just feel that it has got the late drama slogan ready and waiting for it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Right. I have nothing else to add. I was going on <laughs> gut feeling here. I can just see Salah streaking through and scoring one in the 18th minute. I'm glad that you brought up all of the relevant statistics to back up that feeling. Thank you very much. It's a lovely vision. Yeah. Fresh from Prague. Yeah. To be fair though, like gut feeling as well, I'm on that Salah late So how train. many how many Liverpool games have you seen that have sort of broken down into transition this season mm-hmm. and Liverpool have piled it on late? How many... How many games has Mohamed Salah genuinely done what I've just described? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can, you can picture the games, like mm. the, the game against Everton earlier this season. It was really tight. And then suddenly they scored two goals in like the 90th and 93rd minute. Yeah. Penalty and a, and a late goal from Salah in transition. Like Liverpool have a way of breaking these, cracking these games into mm. game states that they enjoy mm. and then hitting you. Yeah. And it often happens late because they've got the right players for it. Yeah. yeah. Home crowd getting rolled up if it is tight. Like you think they'll be getting getting with the, with the players? And yeah, well, I've gone for a City that. win, so what I'm really after <laughs> here is um, is a is a late inconsequential Mohamed Salah strike to make it three yeah. one. Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. fair enough. Okay, then now over to our last market, um, which is Chelsea versus Newcastle shirt numbers. 
Um, so for anyone new to the show, that is the accumulated number on the back of the, each scorer's shirt. So um, if Nicholas Jackson scores one goal and it ends one nil, this will make up 15. I won't give away too many other shirt numbers because <laughs> I'm sure that will come into some rationale. Um, but the midpoint is 61, so 59 to sell, 63 to buy with Sporting Index. For the last time today, higher or lower, guys? Three, two, one. Oh. Oh, I'm looking the wrong way. Yeah, it's, it's you me. It's on your yeah. own this time. It's me on my own. Yeah, I've gone higher. Um, one, I expect goals. It is a relatively high line. 61. Mm. Um, obviously, things to take into account. Do we expect there to be lots of goals in it? I think there do. This is uh, midpoint 3.45 with spread X here as far as the number of goals in the game. Mm. That's the third highest That's in high. the Premier League this season, only behind the Arsenal game and the Villa game. 4-1 um, in the reverse uh, to Newcastle, uh, where there were a lot of low shirt scoring mm. numbers, but most of those players are, are out for this Indeed, one. Yeah. So um, looking through who is likely to score... Um, Personally, I'm expecting there to be four goals or more in it. So, who's going to score them? Look at Chelsea. Nicholas Jackson, you've already said, 15. Top goal scorer, Cole Palmer, 20. Uh, you then got uh, Gallagher, who scored a couple of goals recently at 23. And also, both wing-backs playing at the moment play very high in advance. So I think they'll get some opportunities in this one. Um, and that's Chilwell, 21, and Gusto 27. Um, Newcastle. I said his name wrong, I know. Newcastle. I'm just laughing at you know all the squad numbers. No, <laughs> it's not my heart, is it? But, um, we'll do a test later. Um, Newcastle, this is the one that really like, excites me as far as this line is concerned because I think there's some decent numbers here uh, of players that I fancy could get on the score sheet. Starting with the lower ones, uh, Gordon, 10, Isaac, 14. You've got Barnes, 15. Murphy's been playing on, on the right-hand side mm. of the minute at 23. If he's not, and Almiron comes back in, he's 24. Yeah. Uh, you then got the likes of Willick at 28. Anderson's back from his back injury, 32. So some decent squad numbers here. Longstaff likes to get in, in and around and involved around the box. I think he could have a, a decent game here at 36. And one that really stands out is Gimaraish, 39. Um, mm. A big driving force for Newcastle. And one that could clear this on his own is Miley, 67, if he comes in. Ooh, then he'll yeah. be a real wrecking ball for this uh, he got a lot of goals this season, Lewis Miley? <laughs> He's due one, isn't he? He's due one. He's, He's due one. Nice way yeah. it. <laughs> well, I think you've got something good to say on Bruno, although... I barely got... I mean, it's... Join up with look, I've gone with lower. The only thing that actually scares me here is the fact that Kieran Trippier is injured. Yes. Which means that, presumably, a Bruno Guimaraes will be on set pieces. So we have a slightly enhanced chance mm. of Bruno mm. Guimaraes sticking one into the top corner with shirt number 39, yes. and more or less making this up himself, especially if you had a Conor Gallagher goal, which isn't mm. unseen. Mm. So that does concern me a little bit. Let's see, but that's the only... That was honestly the only edge I could find for hire. I don't have a lot of faith in this having loads of goals. Do I? Really? I don't. I, I know the line's high, um, mm. and I appreciate that, that Chelsea probably... There are probably more goals in Chelsea games than we, we let ourselves believe. If you actually look, mm. at, look at the results, you, you don't often tally up to what you think. But I never really want to back Chelsea to score goals. <laughs> and Newcastle away from home have been quite poor this season, picking mm. it up in parts. But I didn't like the line at all. Mm. And the only, the only thing that actually scares me here is Bruno Guimaraes on set yeah. pieces. Yeah, same for me. I, I, I can't see it being a massive goal fest, which, as you know, is, hurts my feelings yeah, It does, lot, yeah. Because yeah. I, I only want to see Who, Like, you're in that chair. That chair's know, got vibes. I must be cursed. Um, and I just think, like... You mentioned like there are quite a few players that have quite tasty shirt numbers, but they're all sort of like the wing backs or the midfielders. So I don't know. I don't fancy goals, and if if, if this is to make up, it's going to have to come from midfielders. Which okay, set pieces from from Bruno, but mm. not, maybe not not keen on it. It's all a big if question mark. Isaac scores and Jackson scores. We're exactly halfway to the the, the, the number. So. Then a Gimaraish goal, we're, we're, we're going. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why, but for some mm. reason that Isaac and um, Jackson example makes me feel more confident about, oh. about my... <laughs> wow. About <laughs> wow, OK. Well, I'm fancying goals here. I don't think either can keep clean sheets, so um, that was the, the foundation of mine. So if I'm wrong on that, I am in trouble. <laughs> right, then, that's it for this week. Thanks very much to both of the guys for joining me, and, and thanks, of course, for watching. There's lots of football on this week. There's lots of sport over the next fortnight with Cheltenham. Um, England and India in the cricket so yeah firstly just enjoy but do make sure you check out Spread X and Sporting Index for all of your spread betting and fixed odds needs odds checker for all of the latest odds find the best value across the market and whoscored.com as well for any stats needs um, it's really great out there if you, if you need some ammunition 
for your conversations in the pub or wherever you're having them to back up your football knowledge. Don't just quote us. Go to whoscored.com. Thanks very much, guys, and we'll catch you next time.